The custom shops are here. What's changed? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. That's right, we had some new Dave Mustaine models drop. If you need to learn all about the Gibson USA versions, you can check out this episode. But now we finally have the custom shops, which are a little bit more expensive at $7,000 versus the $2,800 price point. So I guess today we're gonna find out what's different, is it worth it? Because if you remember correctly, I didn't really like the Dave Mustaine USA, so maybe this one will change my mind. So starting off here, our case is similar, but a little bit different. Instead of being gray, it's a flat black. It doesn't feel like it's a painted material like it did last time, similar to how the Adam Jones cases were done. And now we've got the Gibson Custom decal on it with a very similar Dave Mustaine silhouette. Our latches look about the same, however, they might have fixed their whole bendy issue that we had last time. And they decided that they were only going to make 75 of each of the colors. So let's see, which one are we going to review today? Obviously, I had to go with the flame top burst. Yeah, so this has a much better presence straight out of the case. I'm kind of looking forward to this review and demo now. So this bad boy is called Red Amber Burst, and it's the only one of the custom shops that got a flame maple top added to it to make it different from the other ones. The other color you can see is an ebony VOS. So that means it's gonna have that gunk on top of it that just kind of makes it look a little bit more aged looking. We will unbox one of those in the unboxing series in a couple of days, but I'm just gonna focus this review on this. So if you don't like the whole VOS process, it looks like this one is just a straight up gloss. However, both of them still do have the maple tops, it's just this one has a figured one that's showing. So that is the biggest difference between the USA and the custom shop one, the addition of a maple top. Biggest difference number two, hey, we've got binding here and not just any binding, it's actually multi-ply like a Gibson Les Paul custom. So that's five ply here, still the same one ply on the neck, but hey, check this out, a bound Explorer headstock. <laughs> you don't see that too often at all. Not even Explorer customs get that. And would you look at that, it's not even just single ply, it's three ply binding. But perhaps my favorite spec change here is actually the fact that it's a string through instrument instead of being a stop bar tailpiece. That just transforms this from being kind of a, a weird looking Gibson XPL from the 80s versus being something new, kind of blending some 50s Gibson elements in here. And honestly, it kind of makes Dave Mustaine feel a little bit more at home as compared to some of his older signature models with different companies. Something else that kind of makes us look more Gibson-like is the fact that we now have gold hardware and or a chrome one, depending on your finish, instead of the whole blackout vibe that the USA's had. And hey, we even have our fret nibs back, so that's interesting. So yeah, first impressions here. I like this a lot better than the Gibson USA. The quality of the finish looks a little bit higher end. I mean, is it worth paying three times the price for a very similar guitar? I'll leave that up to you guys. But there's a few other spec changes that they also made that we'll talk about on the workbench, which I feel makes this one inferior to the USA's. But at the end of the day, I mean, these are limited editions, so they always have that going for it. However, were these an instant sellout like almost every single Gibson limited edition has been for the past couple of years? No, honestly, I would say these things have flopped. They haven't sold out yet. <laughs> they only made 75 of each color. So that's really shocking because I thought for sure these things would sell out instantaneously. Now the ebony ones, I get it. It's not as flashy. I saw those things last in a couple of weeks, but no, they're still out there if you want them. Now there's many theories that you could make as to why these didn't sell out instantaneously, but I think it really comes down to that these got announced way too early. Cause it was all the way back in 2019 when the Dave Mustaine models got leaked. And then it took them a whole nother year to give us the first taste of the Gibson USAs. And here we are another year later for the custom shops. I feel like the hype train died out before any of these and like the Gene Simmons models ever even came out. But that's just my own personal theory. Hopefully it doesn't take a whole nother year to get the Kramer signatures because honestly, that's the one I'm most excited about because they're pointy. Or maybe it's because Gibson didn't do a promotional video about these as they normally do with most major releases. They just did a couple of Instagram posts and put them on their website. Or maybe is it even because they decided to do the opposite of this one that they normally do? Typically they go custom shop USA Epiphone slash Kramer. 
This time they did USA Custom Shop and then potentially the Kramer? Who knows? Was the demand already satisfied with the Alien Tech Green Limited Edition and the regular USA production runs? So besides our guitar and the case, what else do these things come with? Looks like we get a nice Richter strap here, which I would assume is something that Dave Mustaine likes to play with. It's just kind of like a standard seatbelt style one. Feels like it's made of really nice quality materials though. We get the Dunlop strap lock counterparts. Looks like the custom shop has swapped over to tiny little warranty pamphlets with a QR code now too. Key for the case, custom shop hang tags, and lastly a COA for the instrument. So it looks like this bad boy is number 24 of 75. So to learn more about Dave's new signature flying V, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs. Inside the custom shop Mustaine, let's take a look at it. The pickups are the same ones that are in the USA's. You've got the SH-1N in the neck, and you've got his signature Thrash Factor in the bridge. The custom shops even have the same black back plates. However, different this time, we actually have covers on it. But it still says Seymour Duncan and Dave Mustaine on the bridge one. But the spec sheets just call this whole thing the Thrash Factor signature set, even though technically only the bridge is a signature. Unless they slightly modified that one for him, I'm not entirely too sure. But I'd say this pickup route's looking pretty good. You can see just how thick the maple top is that sits on top of this mahogany body. I'd say roughly a quarter inch. I'm kind of surprised they didn't like extend the neck tenon even further into the body, but you have to remember, this is already way further than most flying Vs anyways, because you got the whole 24 fret thing going on. Then we've just got some of the more stuff here for the bridge pickup. Overall, pretty clean routes. And as far as the pickup readings go, the bridge is 16.25k ohms, our neck is 7.6, and our middle position for fun, 5.18. Oh my goodness. Our output jack is over here, my friends, right? However, the USA ones, they did a channel route down here that linked those together, and then it cut across the bridge pickup, and then it went down into here. This one's doing something different. And it looks like it's the maple top that allowed them to do that because they put routes in the mahogany body. So all these wires can just manually flow through it nicely. So it's possible they just put another whoop right over here to make it work. We'll have to see. As far as the bridge, they opted for a Gibson Nashville style one. I'm surprised they didn't use the ABR one, but it is advanced plated incorporated branded. And now I would love to show you what's sleeping underneath the Chevron because unlike historic flying Vs that are Carina, they do not have them capped off. It's just three screws that you can remove. However, this one was over tightened to the point where I can't remove it. It just spins. But with a little bit of leverage, I was able to get it. So anything crazy under here? No, six string through ferrules three screws. However, we do have one strange additional hole right there. It appears to be filled in with buffing compound. Not quite sure why that's there, because it doesn't line up with anything on the back of this. As far as the controls, it's just like the USA one. This is your bridge volume. This is your neck volume. Now, why is it swapped like that? It's for volume swell reasons. Three-way toggle switch with a master tone. As far as the output jack, it looks similar to the Gibson USA version. However, at the same time, it's definitely a little bit different of how they did all of the channel routing within there. So I'll have to look at the backside to see how they tied all that in. On the USA version, there was a little bit of a gap between the body and the jack plate. So I wanted to check that on the custom shop. It appears that they've corrected that issue. So that pretty well sums up things for the body, but we can take a closer look at the binding here to see how it is multiply. And I've really fallen in love with the finish on this one. I mean, it was a perfect Halloween release for Gibson. I mean, they could have just called this pumpkin burst, but then it wouldn't make too much sense in a couple of years. But perfect fall autumn colors here. And initially I was against that whole ebony VOS because it's like for the same price, you get the flame top and cooler finish. I feel like these should have been priced like 500 higher over the other ones or maybe make the ebony one like $500 less. But the more and more I've been looking at those, the more I'm like, you know, that actually has a pretty cool vibe with the whole nickel hardware too. But so far, this is actually a pretty lightweight guitar, and it is about 1.63 inches thick according to my calipers. I'm not sure if that differs from the Gibson USA version or not, I don't think I remember to measure that. But now, our fretboard leaves me questioning, is the Gibson USA version actually better? Because those guys have a compound fretboard radius, which is a premium feature, right? You would think the custom shop would also get that, but it doesn't. It's a standard 12-inch fretboard radius. 
So that's kind of a fail in my opinion. And do you see what they did here? They made our inlays smaller. If you go back to that USA release review video, one of my inlays was chipped because it was so thin. So I'm wondering if they swapped that up for the custom shop release so they didn't have to worry about messing with that. But it's still an ebony fretboard. As I told you earlier, you do have fret nibs on the custom shop one, which is kind of strange because, you know, Mustaine specifically had to tell them, no, I don't want fret nibs for Gibson USA. So the fact that he put them back on for this, maybe it's because the rest of the guitar is so fancy and we finally converted them over to having fret nibs. In case you're not familiar, these are 25 and a half inch scale lengths. So that's why I think this is a sleeper model. It might not be very well appreciated at first, but give this thing a good five, 10 years when they're not necessarily making Mustaine models anymore. And I can see these things going up in value because A, it's a weird flying V with a cool finish and a flame top. You don't find that too often. B, it's got a bound headstock, well, that's an Explorer headstock in general. C, 25 and a half inch scale length, unique inlays, very strange neck profile. And if you need even more reasons, there were very few of these things made. I mean, 75 of each color, 150 in total. That's a pretty low production run. So this was definitely not one for the flippers out there. But long-term investors, mark my words, I think you'll do okay on these if you hold on to them. Because if you're a collector in the year 2035, here's my prediction based on the models that we know about today in 2022. It's gonna be this guy with the flame top and it's gonna be the Alien Tech Green USAs because they were highly limited edition and I would say they're the coolest of the series. The custom shop definitely did a lot better as far as like tooling marks and stuff goes because that USA one I had was very bad in that department and that was a pre-release run. This one, I'm not noticing next to anything. That doesn't mean this was perfectly crafted though. I've been noticing this on a lot of them. The lacquer is lifting off the side of the nut. Now that could have been completely avoided by Gibson had they just masked that area off or like chopped it off or just used a razor blade to slice the finish off. But I've seen a lot of complaints about that and this one also has that. I'm curious if that has something to do with the black tusk nut that they're using. That Gibson's finish just doesn't stick to it very good. All right, that was very nerve wracking. But yeah, if you just slightly score it, you can just peel that finish off if it really does bug you. Unfortunately, I, I scored it slightly too low. That's my bad. However, don't get too upset about that because the nut actually does go slightly deeper into the neck where the finish is over top of it. That's pretty clear here over on the treble side. You can really see where the nut does end. But there we go. I did that side a lot cleaner. I mean, come on, Gibson. Can't you do that? Now, as far as neck specs go, we got 1.72 inches at the nut. That increases to 2.12 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.83, and it's 0.85 by the 12th. That's a very skinny neck. They call it the Dave Mustaine Slim Taper. This is a really skinny, wide feeling neck. It's definitely not like most Gibson guitars out there. but I really, really enjoy this three-ply bound headstock. You just don't see that very often. And you've got your Gibson Mother of Pearl logo with your gold mini Grover tuners. I'm kind of surprised he opted for the Dave Mustaine signature truss rod cover on it again. I think a brass one would have looked pretty cool, but our truss rods are looking in good shape. Moving on to the back, it looks like Mustaine spec'd it out to be black. I think a nice transparent dark brown finish would have looked cool too, but artist signature guitars, you, you can't put your own opinions on them. But it still has the offset back strap button, so it's out of your way when you're playing, and I'm sure it also helps balance the guitar. Your other one is down here by your output jack, so you're supposed to be able to tie your jack in with your strap and go from there. Now, does it make it kind of harder to play sitting down, you know, classical style? Yeah, just kind of depends on the jack style you're using, I guess. But here you can see your heavy-duty string ferrules. And then the back control cavity is a little bit different than the USA's. It doesn't have quite as large of an angle to it. Compare them side by side, and I think you see what I'm talking about. We can see that the thrash factor set is four conductor wired. However, they just tape off the other two conductors and just wired it up like regular. Must be something Mustaine prefers. He doesn't want to mess with things on stage with coil splitting and whatnot. However, I think it would have been a cool option that only the custom shops got. But you can see through to the maple top. That's nice. And at the end of the day, it does look like there's two routes here. So your output jack's coming through to here to get wired up. So it does appear just to kind of to have a little route over here like I thought the USA ones were going to. I'm kind of surprised they didn't just do the same X style route, but you know, whatever, whatever works. Oh my, there's a, a ding on my brand new guitar. 
To be fair, the, the place that I bought this from, it, it looks like they had a good time playing this before they sent it to me, let's put it that way. And right here in the light reflecting, it looks like there was a contamination in the finish that caused a little bit of a divot right here, so that's another QC issue. And this spot's a little bit nitpicky, but you can see a little bit of a tooling mark, and they did not get the finish perfectly scraped off the edge. Now, most Gibsons don't have that perfect in that area, but I feel like at the price point and the, you know, 75 limited edition custom artist signature, maybe they could have just took a little bit more time to get that perfect. I'm also seeing a little bit of orange peel in some areas, and you also have, brand new from the factory, the line showing where the body meets the neck. That's pretty common after like a year or whatnot, but coming straight out of the factory with that is a little bit of a letdown. Normally that happens after there's been a little bit of settling. But here's the back of the neck. It's all ebony and finish. We do still have the volute. It's a mahogany neck. We've got the Mustaine silhouette. You can see our golden mini grovers and everyone's favorite place to go, the DMV, number 24. All said and done, this one weighs just a hair over eight pounds. Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this one sounds. Now, I'd love to play some Megadeth riffs for you guys today, but that didn't work so well in my last video. So today, we're gonna rock all Metallica. <laughs> I would say this actually has some really nice clean tones to it. I'm digging that neck pickup. And that mixes well in the middle position as well. But this bridge just has so much bite to it, I actually have it turned down a little bit. So I'd say about an eight and a half. Here it is all the way up. So even if you're not into metal, you might still just enjoy this guitar for its nice neck pickup. If you're a classical guitar player and you really like the way that those necks are really wide, kind of like the 2015 Gibson neck specs, this really kind of reminds me of that, just how wide and thin it feels. We got good upper fret access too, so it doesn't just have to be Megadeth stuff. Well, let's go ahead and try some distortion. <laughs>
Now that we know all about the new Dave Mustaine custom shot Flying V, what are my final thoughts on this one? I liked it a lot better than the Gibson USA version. The finish on this one just speaks to me a bit more, both color and just how they did it up. I didn't necessarily like how you could see the wood grain through the finish on the first run. Now that's not to say that you don't get that same effect in this black finish in a couple of areas either. I really notice it while I'm playing up by the tuning pegs. It's kind of a turn off, but it feels nice to play if you like this wide thin neck profile. I mean, for me, it's not my favorite, but I could see why somebody would really like this. So he has a very certain neck profile that he likes and that's great. This is a beautiful piece. Do I think it's worth the 7,000 bucks that they're asking? As a Gibson limited edition collectible, yes, I, I honestly do. I'm surprised these things did not sell out instantaneously because these are seriously cool spec. I'm glad that they exist because you know what's interesting about this? You might just look at this and think, ah, oh, it's a string through flying V. It's like the 58 style. It actually has more so of the 67 body style as far as the neck join goes. Those Karina Vs, they kind of stick out and are a bit blockier. So it's a little bit more slim lined in that aspect while still having the coolest attribute of those Karina Vs. So is this one for everyone? No, I mean, the, the pickups are about the same. The neck profile is about the same. If you need to get your Dave Mustaine on and you have to have a Gibson, one of the USA ones will definitely get you pretty darn close. But if you need custom shop quality, this is one for you. But in retrospect, I'm really glad I took the razor blade and chopped the finish off the edge of the nut because it was just flaking off anyways. It looks way better. So that's pretty much all I have to say against this is there's just a few QC things that they could have done better. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. Another famous player that likes to use flying Vs on stage is Paul Stanley of KISS. Did you know I actually sold him a flying V that he's currently using on stage? I didn't know it at the time of recording this episode, but you could check out his new guitar in this old video of a flying V custom.